Okay, FAQ number 67. Turn in your Bible to the book of Mark, chapter 9. Mark, chapter 9. We're going to read a couple of verses here. The question comes up, Mark, uh, what about this thing of what's going on here in Mark, chapter 9, verse 43 through 44? We'll read those two verses. How does this deal with, is this, is this a kind of a reference to the Mark of the Beast? Let's look about this. Mark 9, verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now, if you have a new version, of course, it takes out verses 44 and 46. You know, they leave in verse 48, you know, kind of like a thief comes along and takes, uh, you know, two thirds of your money. And you, well, don't call him a thief then because he left me with one third of the money. Uh, no. He's a thief because he took anything from you. So don't, again, a little attack on the new versions there. But the point is, I've heard this thing brought up and they say, well, what if you're forced, what if somebody's forced in the time of Jacob's trouble to take the mark of the beast, say they get knocked out or something and they wake up and there's a band-aid there and they go, oh, what happened? Oh no, I got, you know, somebody put the mark of the beast in my hand. What am I going to do? And they go and they quick get a, a big butcher knife or a machete or something and they, and they cut their hand off. And that's what Jesus is referring to here. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Turn back to Revelation. The book of Revelation. And verse, or excuse me, chapter 13. Verse 16. It says here, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Okay, so there's the mark of the beast. You say, well, see, then you can take it and, and that'd be a big problem. Let's actually look and see what the punishment comes upon or why the punishment comes. Uh, chapter 14, um, starting at verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Two things. And that's an easy thing to remember there, because, you know, we have... Here in America, I don't know about other countries. You have, you know, nine one one, call nine one one for an emergency. So just remember in your mind, <clears throat> Revelation fourteen nine through eleven. That's a very very bad place to be. <laughs> you know, if you aren't saved and you miss the rapture and you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to keep that stuff in mind. But you see, there it's a two part system that gets you God's wrath for eternity. That gets you damned without any kind of remedy at all. It's a two-part system. Worshipping the beast and taking the mark. So if conceivably somebody would be in a car accident or something and they, in the time of Jacob's trouble, which I'm sure there's going to be plenty of those, and they get taken to the hospital and they're unconscious and the people look at their medical records and they say, oh, they don't have the mark of the beast. You know, they don't have the implantable RFID chip. You know, and so we're going to do this, you know, and, and they put the chip in them and the person's, you know, in the hospital bed and they wake up and they go, they look down and go, oh no, you know, cutting your hand off isn't going to do anything but make you have one less hand, okay? Uh, you could get that chip in you and yet say, you know, if it's forced upon you and say, I'm not worshiping the beast, you know, and of course the body of Christ isn't going to be there, I know that, but what I'm saying is, Somebody in that time, if the chip was forcibly put into them, they could still say, I'm not worshiping the beast. And a good example of that would be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego back in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, it's kind of like Daniel is really the, the end times book for 
the Old Testament. The book of Revelation is the end times book for the New Testament. And you read the two of them together, they mesh perfectly. And <clears throat> you have Nebuchadnezzar, you know, who is the first head of the first New World Order. The Antichrist is going to be the final head of the final Satanic New World Order. And Nebuchadnezzar sets up an image and he says everybody bows down to it. Well, Revelation chapter 13 talks about the false prophet setting up the image of the beast and everybody bows down to it. Now you could have somebody that was forcibly, you know, chipped, so to speak, and or whatever the, the you know, thing's going to be. You could have them and they could be in this wherever, you know, in some Babel building someplace in the future and they say, everybody bow down and worship the beast. You know, big telescreen there or whatever else. And uh, that person just says, I'm not bowing. Well, you got the mark there. You got this, this chip in you and stuff. I'm not bowing. No, that was forced on me. You know, what do you think is going to happen to that person? You think they're going to say, well, it's okay. You got the chip. You don't have to bow. No. Um, if you don't worship the beast in that time period, you're going to get killed. You know. And you say, well, then it's okay. Somebody could take the mark of the beast and, you know, they could take the chip and they could go out and, and buy things and just kind of live in the community. Just don't worship the beast. Uh, no, it's not going to work that way because, you see, it's going to be a total control system. So if you, if you take that chip, I believe that it's going to be, you get in line to take the chip and it'll be okay. They put the chip in you and right away it's like, okay, now, you know, raise your left hand, you know, because the goats are going to be on the left hand of Jesus Christ. Raise your left hand. Do you swear allegiance to the beast? Uh, whole allegiance, nothing but allegiance or something. <laughs> Whatever they're going to do. I think it's going to be chipped and worship the beast all at once. So for some weird reason, somebody would be unconscious and they'd chip them. They could come to and, and they'd be like, you know, you've been implemented with the new cashless ID and are you willing to pledge your allegiance to you know, our Christ. And you say, no, I, I want that thing out of me. No, it's, it's forced now by law. Well, I'm not worshiping the beast. Well, that's going to be, you know, death penalty. Whatever, I'm not worshiping the beast and you did that thing against my will. Doesn't mean when Jesus says in, that, in Mark chapter 9 there, doesn't mean, you know, cut your hand off, you know, and you can be maimed then and go into life. No, you don't have to do that. Uh, I don't believe that. So hopefully that answers the question.